So, welcome to this chat with the City Times Swara. Thank you. Pleasure. You know, 2020 seems to be a pretty busy year for you because you know you've been socially very active on all your social media platforms. You've had three OTT releases. You've had uh, Rushberry Flesh, and now uh, Bug uh, Beanie Bug. So, how do you feel about the whole year? I mean, strangely, I know it's been a really, really sort of uh, hard year for the whole world. I we've had this pandemic. It's been quite depressing, and you know, there's a lot of uh, things to feel uh, overwhelmed by, but very strangely, I actually have so much to be grateful for this year. I think that uh, you know, in a strange turn of events, but in a very uh, something I'm very grateful for. I feel very blessed for. Um, I've had three huge releases this year at a time when everyone was at home watching OTT. I've had uh, and on three premier platforms. So I've had Raspberry on Amazon Prime in June. I had Flesh on Eros now in August, and now I have Bhag Bini Bhag in uh, you know releasing in this early December uh, on uh, Netflix. And uh, I think that uh, I, I really feel uh, that I'm so lucky, and I should I really am thanking sort of the universe and the powers are out there um, that uh, all different shows, different genres, different roles for me, all of them headlined by me. So lots to be grateful for, really, and I'm. Uh, you know, Raspberry and Flesh were very well received uh, in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of views, in terms of the number of people who watch them, audience reactions. So I really am looking forward also to what kind of response Beanie will have. Because again, it's a totally different character from anything else I've done. Yes. Uh, Swara, I mean, uh, judging by the trailer, obviously for us, you know, it just seems like a coming of age story of this girl who decides to finally stand up for herself and become a stand up comedian. Now, uh, yeah. Is that a role that resonated with you considering that, you know, you are, you know, considering I would say the position of comedians or stand-up comedians in India right now? Because, you know, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, you know what? Yeah, I, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. No. See, Bollywood is known for, you know, comedians who are a little over the top, who are pretty loud and exaggerated, but stand-up comedians are seen as social commentators in many ways. So is that a part that appealed to you? Um, I think that, I think that what appealed to me the most about, uh, definitely, uh, the big thing when I read the Dini script was, see, stand-up comedy is a different, it's a different kind of performing art. It's a whole different craft. It has its own language. It has its own grammar. It's something that you should learn or train for, or at least do. Uh, uh it's not something that just because you're an actor, that means you can also be a stand-up comic. That's not true. So when I was offered the part and I knew that I had like these three sets to do, I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. I was like, oh my God, I don't even know if I can do this, if I can pull this off. But because I was terrified and it was a challenge, I was like, I'm going to do this. I am going to learn. So I actually became almost like a student dabbling in stand-up com comedy. Uh, but uh, I didn't, I, I think that the show is not just about stand-up comedy. It is basically the story of a young girl finding her self-expression. And it's a journey story. It's a story of, uh, and it's a very uplifting story. So really, that's why I did it. You know, um, uh, that's actually why I was like, I want to be part of this. So, um, uh, uh, I, I, but I will definitely say that I think that, yes, see, humor has different genres as well. I mean, there is a genre of slapstick humor, slightly over the top humor. And there is this genre, which is uh, sort of new and like now growing so rapidly in India, which is stand up comedy. And I think that I've always admired stand-up comedy as a, as a craft and also the stand-up comics. There are so many really talented boys and girls out there. Uh, I think that to be able to write your own set and to perform it in front of an audience that will that could validate you but also negate you and reject you and to share your vulnerability in that kind of a context, it's really brave. And then of course, I mean, the best comedy always I feel is a comedy that's telling you an uncomfortable truth about the world you live in. And in India, as we have seen, that that is something, and in, actually not just in India, in many parts of the world, that is something that also leads to a lot of backlash. So mm -hmm. I think that comics really put themselves out there and they're actually doing some very brave things. And some of them, I mean, if you look at, say, for example, a Kunal Kanga or like a Varun Gover, or like there's so many people out there now, I think that they're all very, very brave people. So do you ever get the feeling right now, you know, considering like what you mentioned, the socio-political scene, especially in India, I would say, and like you said, every part of the world, that uh, stand-up comedians are kind of like an endangered species right now. 
you know uh, you know all this so debate of about- some of them who've been attacked that i think we should ask konal kamra and agrima joshua mm-hmm. and uh, some of the other kids who've been uh, who've been uh, harassed whether mm-hmm. they feel endangered i mean i think that i think that we we i think that we definitely need to learn to be more tolerant of you know uh, we keep saying that india indians are very tolerant indians are very tolerant but i don't see that necessarily in mm. always mm. so i think that we do need to learn to tolerate a uh, 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 freedom like freedom of speech and expression a little more as long as it's not uh, you know something that's inciting violence or being abusive or you know inciting a hate crime or does not fall into the category of hate speech i mean i'm certainly not somebody who encourages hate speech i think that freedom of speech uh, and expression does have its limitations uh, and should have limits especially in a country like india where the power dynamics is skewed um uh but i think that a uh, hurt feelings i mean feelings can be hurt by anything no mm-hmm. so that is i think we have to also introspect ourselves a little bit about what our own reactions are mm-hmm. uh personally swara for you you know you've been pretty active on social media and you know you have said it as it is in many cases so do you ever uh, believe that you know uh, in particularly again in india people have kind of lost their sense of humor somehow you know they just seem to take everything too seriously and uh, is that what is happening right now or this intolerance you know you kind of uh, refuse to see the comedy around you or you know something funny which probably people tweet out yeah absolutely i mean i i, I think it's happening everywhere in the world hmm. i think that what what is happening is that everywhere in the world hate is on the rise and a certain kind of um, uh, normalization of hate is going on and uh, and therefore anything becomes an excuse to express that hate uh but i think the good thing is that there's also especially in the last 3 4 years whether it's say the black lives matter movement in the us whether it's in poland the women who are uh, protesting for the right to abortion and to their bodies and to their reproduction whether it's you know in the middle east there's been a lot of female activists who have been uh, uh and i'm speaking of uh, largely west asia in in a larger sense there's so many activists uh, who are both advocating for freedom of expression but also women's rights who have been a uh, sort of you know standing up against uh, a certain kind of an accepted um, norm and whether it's india whether where we are seeing ceaseless protests in the last 6 5 6 years but definitely in the last 2 3 years i mean as we speak farmers are sitting in protest in uh, on the delhi border so i think that the the positive thing is that there is a backlash people are standing up against this hate and they're challenging it and i always see a lot of hope in that mhm okay Uh, and Swara, I mean, as in, okay, uh, have you ever felt that you know, as a person or as a activist and as an actor, you're kind of living up to the name that your parents have given you? Uh, have you ever found out why they named you Swara? Become, I, I, I think I'm a loudspeaker for other people's causes. So in that sense, yes, the Swar aspect of my name and the the fact that it the root word is is note and sound. It's hmm. actually uh, one of the names of the Devi uh, of of the goddess in Hindu. Um, in the hindu uh, pantheon as in in the form of sound so yeah. it's a, it's a very beautiful and a powerful name and i i hope i do my parents proud in every aspect of life not just in in the name they gave me but so <laughs> <laughs> swara have you ever worried and i know you know it's a question that probably we should have been asked when you started right at the beginning that you know your social activist kind of role would ever impact your creativity in any ways in terms of the work that you get or kind of you know the roles that you get to perform has that ever worried you or in other words what makes swara baskar so courageous in a, a country or amidst a lot of actors who choose to keep silent on so many issues i think that um i have to say that uh, really my parents should get the credit for that and they don't get enough credit uh my parents my confidence my courage of conviction my faith and my fearlessness and comes from the fact that i know my parents have my back and my family has my back and whatever happens in the world i can go back to my parents uh, and really that is the grounding and that is the foundation that allows me to fly or soar or whatever and i do want to say out there for any parents who are listening that is the most precious gift you can give your children is to let your children know that you will be there for them no matter what i mean and i'm saying this even as adult children i'm in my 30s and i draw so much strength from the fact that my parents are behind me uh uh and 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 uh, that's not to say that one should be responsible with that but i'm just saying that that just gives you so much strength so 
so definitely my parents and i think my education you know the fact that i feel uh, i feel i i am my education has given me articulation it has given me the power of critical reasoning of thinking of questioning of of logic of rationality and of articulation uh, and i think that this is what helps you kind of stand up for what you believe in because you're able to express how you feel and make a case for yourself um uh, so so i think that definitely my parents my family and my education is is what i would uh, uh, sort of lay the credit of my so called courage on uh, but i would also say that i'm now very grateful for the kind of support i've got especially in the last one year uh, because i think that a, a lot of people in the media and social media online are realizing that this is crazy i mean yes i've been going through this certain kind of hate and trolling and backlash for the last 6 years but i think in the last one or two years a lot of people have begun to realize and actually stand up and support each other and i found a lot of support online in the media among friends so i am very grateful for all of that uh i will um yeah i i think i think that in as far as losing work goes look it doesn't affect my acting i i'm still as dedicated and diligent a performer as i have always been i am very hard working because i really feel that my work is all i have uh i'm a young person living alone in bombay with my pets mm. and that's my life my work is my life really it it's what's given me my identity i take it very seriously um and uh i think that uh, but i think that yeah it has affected the kind of like the fact that i have maybe maybe i don't get enough roles uh, as i ought to get or uh, maybe i don't get enough big films as i i mean all if you see i have at least 400 crore films in my you know kitty if you look at uh, if you look at the, the films that, that i have uh, but i don't get as many you know big film offers i know a lot of producers have told me that you have the reputation of being a troublemaker people don't want the controversy i've been sacked from brand endorsements um uh, you know after campaigning for certain uh, candidates in the 2019 lok sabha elections uh, i actually have a contract that says that because of your participation in the cnrc protest you have brought disrepute on our brand and we terminate your contract so there has been all of that but uh, i was prepared for it uh, because the thing is that as i said you know ambika ji i am not a paid influencer i don't say things because somebody is paying me for it i am um, it's not like i'm taking up a cause because a brand is standing behind me i am speaking from a place of conviction and belief and when you speak from a place of conviction you're willing to fight for that conviction you're willing to stand up and you're willing to lose uh, some material things so mm-hmm. you're willing to pay a price in that sense and i think that you know i think that that's really how i look at it i mean it's fine mm mm-hmm. Uh, Swara, is that what made you kind of you know you tweeted out your support to Sahila Rashid and you know it's uh, very interesting that you said about how parents should be kind of supportive of their children. Is that one aspect of it which kind of bothered you about that entire controversy about her issue with her dad? I mean, I don't want to get into the personal uh, sort of um, uh, you know family feud of anybody, but I will say that uh, that I don't like to see people being. Um, sort of victimized uh, targeted and then harassed in either the media or the social media i think that there are so many women out there who had to suffer this i think shela uh, has had to suffer this time and again uh, uh, and again and again uh, and i think i thought that this one was particularly low and uh, so i just wanted her to know that there are people who believe her and who support her um, uh, and uh, i think that discrediting women uh activists by saying that they take money is like the oldest you know it's the oldest accusation in the book you know when you like uh, if it's a regular girl you say she has a loose character and if it's a non activist you say that oh you know she's taken money so i mean i think that these are things that i mean it's happened to me on social media so and i know that i have been so grateful for the support i've had and i just wanted chela to know that she has that support and anybody else that i feel is being targeted unfairly i mean i i think that i have been very vocal in my support for riya chakravarty Uh, and the kind of victimization that she went through so i really feel that it's important to stand up for each other and to support each other you know mm. uh, so i mean as in you know you have met with a lot of lovers and haters over the course of your uh, activist uh, i mean role as a, a social media personality but what according to you or uh, personally has been the best uh, defense against all this for you what if you had to send out a message to other people you know who can't handle it because sometimes it gets too much for people who are being trolled how do you handle it what's been your best uh, mechanism against it you know the thing is the thing to know about trolling is that firstly a lot firstly it's losers who are doing that all right if uh, the high point of somebody's day is to be saying something nasty to you and feel good about yourself uh, just you should know that they are totally worthless and that the only worthwhile thing that is happening in their lives thanks to you so you should feel happy about yourself 
um you want to go and uh, uh, confirm what i'm saying just go look at most of the followers of this they will not have more than like 100 followers at max 200 at the max a lot of these are actually bots a lot of these in my case of course a lot of it is organized a lot of it has you know it has it sells behind it and so on there's you know uh, they, you know who those people are a, a lot of them are you know known right wing trolls so i uh, i know that when i fight for a certain cause there there will be the people from the other camp who will you know come and try and discredit you uh, but i will tell the young people out there that you have to develop and i'm i'm sorry that i have to say this because actually no one should need to develop a thick skin to abuse but you should develop a thick skin or to abuse because it's basically bullying and imagine when we were in school and someone was bullying us what is the only way to stop bullying it is to stand up to it so you must not allow a bully to get away with it and that is why i make it a point to call out people especially if they are um verified accounts especially if they are uh, people who have some standing of their own because i want people to know that you can take on bullies you don't have to be scared by them i mean i think that silencing people and you no know, people shame us they say nasty things they say abusive things they say sexually abusive things to silence us it is the it's the oldest trick in the book of the bully it's to shame you and to silence and the idea is that because they they are looking at silence as uh, sort of uh, you know surrender and, and as giving up and, and so i i would just say that don't be silenced mm-hmm. and i think quote retweet is a great thing it's a great way to shame people who are harassing you i think it was the best invention of this decade a quote retweet i use it liberally uh and uh yeah absolutely just go for it and you will find support and i would tell i would tell people support each other you know if you see something happening to your friends or someone that you even know or someone even you agree with stand up and support them uh we we must fight for uh the social media and the virtual public sphere to be a decent place in a place for decent civil discourse just like we do it in a restaurant on the road on the you know if you saw someone being harassed in a restaurant on the road on a bus stop you you you'd intervene you'd stop uh it so why should we not do that on social media mm. that's really commendable swara especially like i said you know considering there are the, there are lots of actors who have a lot of power or clout who don't choose to use it okay so we think it's pretty admirable and to uh, kind of come back it's to the own really yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, to come back to uh, beeni uh, you know what is it that you want audiences to take away after watching the series considering it's supposed to be like a slightly lighthearted like a comic kind of a thing I mean firstly I just want to say that like you know this has been a year that has been so depressing it has been so dark it has been just such a mess I think that in everywhere in the world I think we all need a reason to smile mm-hmm. so the first reason to watch Bhagwini Bhagwan your takeaway is that it's a really uplifting enduring warm story which ends on a note of hope uh, and it's uh, I think that it will make you smile and I think that that's a good enough reason to watch it I I hope that the takeaway from this film will be um for people to 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 feel that it's okay to uh to you know um it's okay to want something different from what your parents want and what society wants from you it's okay and it's okay to take that leap of faith it's okay to uh, to sort of go with the uncertainty and it's okay to make mistakes and fail sometimes uh, uh it's it's not a big crime and i i think that i think that a lot of young people especially in the kind of cultures we come from whether it's south asia subcontinent or uh, the middle east who are you know where family values are very strong for a lot of us balancing the expectations of our parents and our families with what we desire it's a big thing so i think that that there, there is a universe there, there will be a universal resonance to this show because i think that there is a way in which you can stand up for what you want and what you want and, and be able to take your parents and carry your parents also with you which is really the nicest part of this show so yeah that's what i think Okay thank you so much Swara and we wish you all the best with a, a series coming out and we are just Thank you and I hope you watch it and I hope you like it and yeah I look forward to hearing everyone's responses on the show yeah thank you so much thank you Swara bye bye bye